Given the choice of how to get from New York City to London, would you prefer a seven-hour flight or a seven-day journey on a cruise ship? That's right. Traveling by ship would take 24 times longer than a transatlantic flight. It's clear that massive ships are painfully slow, especially compared to other modes of travel. How do various ships measure up, and why are certain types so slow? To begin with, whether it's a submarine or a speedboat, ship speeds are measured in knots. One knot equals about 1.15 miles per hour. Smaller boats, such as speedboats, travel at a respectable average of 80 knots. The fastest submarines? They can reach about 45 knots. However, the average speed of a modern cruise ship is roughly 20 knots, which is a pitiful 23 miles per hour. And what about Ever Given, the massive container ship famous for blocking the Suez Canal? It is nearly 1,312 feet long and powered by just one diesel engine, driving one propeller. It has almost 80,000 horsepower and an average running speed of 23 to 34 miles per hour. Meanwhile, the maximum speed of a Boeing 737-800 is 588 miles per hour. Imagine a ship tearing through the water at that speed. Seems cool, right? But in reality, these ships' slow speed is actually beneficial. In total, international shipping accounts for around 2 to 3 percent of global CO2 emissions. Slowing down these ships is one of the most effective ways to reduce both fuel consumption and carbon emissions. Slow steaming is the name of the practice that lowers ship speeds to 12 to 19 knots from the standard 20 to 25 knots. Some companies have even adopted super slow steaming, capping speeds at 12 knots. First practiced in the 1970s, slow steaming became more popular alongside the 2008 recession. As demand for shipping fell, slow steaming helped to save fuel. Prior to adopting slow steaming practices, the Emma Maersk, one of the world's largest container ships, would burn around 380 tons of fuel a day, emitting as much as 1,000 tons of CO2 in the process. Maersk has more than 600 ships altogether, all with marine diesel engines. Combined, that's a staggering amount of pollution. Thanks to slow steaming, fuel consumption and greenhouse gas emissions have been reduced by 30%. It's important to note that Maersk is doing all of this by choice. Currently, there's no speed limit for these ships. However, the United Nations has met to discuss implementing one, as enforcing a 20% speed reduction across the industry would lower greenhouse gas emissions by nearly 25%. Meanwhile, a round-trip flight from New York to London will generate about 2,173 pounds of CO2 per passenger. So with all of the benefits of slower travel in mind, a week-long trip at sea doesn't really seem so bad after all.